Hey guys, welcome back to The Way Podcast. I'm Jesse. I'm Ben. I'm Izzy. And I'm Michelle. The Way! Today, we're going to be talking on how we as Christians can grow in a deeper relationship with God. Um, and we're going to be talking about how it was as kids and how we viewed God as kids and how it's maybe changed now. Um, mm. And then we're also going to be talking about some big questions that's been on our hearts and our minds this past couple of days uh, that we've been pondering on. And finally, have some healthy disagreement Ooh. and discussion. And, unlike uh, Cain and Abel. Unlike Cain and Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a little teaser, Ben. We can't <laughs> go there yet. Sorry, we can't go sorry. there yet. This section is sponsored by baby jesus michelle uh, when did you first start um feeling like you had a relationship with god i would say when i rededicated my life to the lord at the age of 18 um so that was last year where i really felt like my relationship with the lord was growing in terms of me my understanding of the bible and what God was speaking to me about in mm. the season that I was in, in terms of like heartbreak and all the stuff that the journey that the Lord was taking me on. Um, I feel like that's where I felt a depth to my relationship with the Lord grow. Yeah. So, yeah. Come on, fresh. Mm. Is you talked about this last week. <laughs> So okay. you're, you're an expert, right? Yeah. I think for me, my I've always said my relationship with God, I didn't really have a turning point. It's definitely mm-hmm. like grown. I had the privilege of growing up in a Christian household and kind of always felt like Jesus was a part of it and just learn more about him and learn more about my relationship grew kind of thing over time. I do think it's through the, the, the difficult moments that really either build your faith or shut it down kind of thing mm-hmm. it depends on how you re- respond to it but i think it's, it's been a tough few years um and but i really chose to lean in so mm-hmm. i think my relationship with jesus has definitely grown um in the last few years especially mm-hmm. and i think i just always hope for it to grow always more and more mm-hmm. um yeah i was baptized when i was 15 so i definitely know a lot more than when i was 15 yeah but as i would like to i'd always want to know when that was eight years ago and I'd love to know more a deep relationship in another eight years so yeah I feel that's the same with most friendships though yeah is that your story as well (laughs) um I don't I don't even think there's really like a click moment it's just as like as I started to reflect on my life the more I started to see God present um Mm. and so like even as even as looking back like five years ago maybe um, from when I was a kid looking back five years from then um mm. being like oh like even though at that moment um like, I, I didn't necessarily see god in the moment but in the reflection being like actually like god was there um and mm. so like through that time of reflection being like oh like god has always been in my life uh, i've just as i get older the more i'm aware of his presence mm. past present and and obviously future. Mm. Um, so. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> I think what's awesome is just like how different the story, although it's like similar, like Christian family, because mm. that's my story, grew up in a Christian family, but each age is just different. And it's so cool that God doesn't mm. work in like a linear way. He doesn't yeah. just meet us when we're 12 and then yeah. you either choose it or you don't. It's yeah. like there's people who get saved when they're 30 or when they're 12 or mm. when they're 15 or when they're 18. And it's... I think for me, looking back on my journey, there's definitely been key moments in my life where it's changed how much I grow with God. Yeah. Like when I was 11, I got baptized and mm-hmm. that changed how I grew with God. When I was 13, I kind of walked away from God a little bit and, and kind of experimented kissing girls and stuff. And, Gross. Woo! and then when I was 14, I then encountered God in a new way. And then I started to grow my relationship with God different. Yeah. And then when I was 16, like lockdown hit, really tough time and I just remember encountering God in a different way yeah and I think for me there's there's just been different encounters throughout my journey which Mm. have kind of changed my trajectory a little bit (laughs) and like now moving out like I moved out of home about a year ago um and I remember it was last January uh, there was a point in in January where I I was struggling a little bit financially and I just remember weeping in church like just weeping at the front And I've never like wept like I've (laughs) wept when I wept then in church. And I just remember feeling from that place onwards super comfortable in church and like super vulnerable in church, but really open to exploring God in my vulnerabilities as well. And that grew me deeply. 
Mm. Um, yeah, there's lots of ways. I, I don't know why I was thinking about this, but in Acts, when it tells the stories, you see Paul's journey quite evidently. You see him um, mm. convert on the Damascus Rose, road. <laughs> um, you see Paul like then try and preach and then gets, get sent away. And at the end, you see him um, getting abandoned uh, on an island and then coming home. And there, there's a whole story around it. Mm. Um, and it's easy to read Acts. You can read it in like two hours and be like, wow, that was the trip. Like, that was Paul's life. He lived a crazy life. Like, why doesn't that happen yeah. in my life? But the truth is, in between each section and each story, there was years yeah. in between. And so I see that for me. Like, there's years mm. between each point in my life. Yeah. Um, but really pivotal moments. And there's still, I, yeah. I pray there's more, like you said. You said, like, I hope there's eight more years of growing deep with God. More like, than eight, hopefully. More than eight, yeah. hopefully forever. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. But, but, but I, I'd love for, for more years of just special moments every yeah. few years yeah. or yeah. every day, you know. What's something that I can do every day that can deepen my relationship with God? Like, well, one, community. Uh, I think being doing life with people who also love Jesus, I think is a really important thing. Um, when we think of, you know, what it means to be a priest, you know, representing God to people and people to God. Um, I think we need to be around people who are representing God, um, who can help us, you know, draw closer to him. Mm. Uh, number two, do you want to go for Jesse? I can take number two. Yeah. Um, I guess number two is just prayer. Like prayer is just having conversations with God, being with God. Mm. Um, and the more you, you be with God, the more you become like God and the better you become. Um, so that just yeah. helps me know him better, obviously, through mm. talking to him. You know. Number three, worship. Um, I, I'm a strong believer that we become what we behold. Um, and so we got to carve time in to like, behold God and who he is and what his character is. Mm. And number four would be the Bible. And I guess it's that same thing of mm. beholding the Bible. Uh, it says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God. The Word meaning like the Bible. And, and so we can trust that when we read the Bible, um, we're also looking at God and what he believes mm. and his values, which will change our values. And does prayer actually deepen our relationship with God? Absolutely. I mean, it's already, you've already touched on it a little bit, that actually spending time with God is transformative. But I think it's also, it's the practice of turning to him in prayer it's even if we don't feel anything he is there he's meeting with us even if he's not answering any of our prayers or doesn't seem like he's answering any of our prayers like he is still worthy of our praise and worth praying to and also knowing that our prayer has so much power mm. and that we're not just little pawn pieces in, in god's big chess puzzle but actually we are invited in to be part of the story shaping his story of how to bring like heaven mm. on earth so prayer is so much power and we shouldn't underestimate that whatsoever so yes it deepens our relationship probably more than we could ever realize this section is sponsored by cain and abel where we can have healthy disagreements unlike cain and abel where cain killed abel the joy in the way is that we get to go on the streets and interview lots of people about church and about christianity and ask them questions like you know have you ever considered christianity are you even christian yourself um, and today it was quite interesting. We were filming uh, and we met a lot of Christians, like an abnormal amount. Usually we met with just people with all these different journeys, but mm. we kept getting Christians. Um, but I reckon 75% of them, when I asked them the question, oh, do you go to church then? Said, no, I don't go to church. Which personally, I kind of take as an, an initial red flag. Like when, I, I don't, like honestly, when I, when I hear them, them say, then. well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't date them, but like, but like when, when I heard that, when they're like, oh yeah. no, I don't go to church. I'm like, oh, well, church is pretty why key. Is it, why is it a red flag for you? Well, for, for me, I've, church is most of what I've known growing up. Yeah. And for me, uh, the amount of input and, um, I don't know, life change that's happened in church is ridiculous, mm. abnormal. Um, and almost all of what I've been through and almost where I am, like where I am today wouldn't have happened throughout mm. if it wasn't for the church helping and supporting me, from what I understand. Yeah. Like all my pivotal moments in life all come through God, like church, through God. Yeah. That's interesting. I, um, I caught up with a family that I uh, have known for a few years now and um, I was chatting to the dad uh, about church and he he hasn't been going to church for a good few years uh, and I was like questioning him about that um, so I, was, I found it really interesting um, I was like I like hearing people's stories and he, he basically opened up about his experience of leadership um, and 
um, the one the the one dimensional aspects of church which he feels around it, it being about this one person sharing to uh, the congregation and that being it and he felt like he had lots of gifts that he weren't able to share uh, and just felt quite abused as a volunteer uh, and so his then experience of church became quite negative and so he decided actually this is a massive faff for me and someone's not going to go that that lockdown was a huge part of that as well because it disrupted a lot of rhythms but like as i was as we were like having conversations um i was like oh wow like you're saying this but you're in other parts of the conversation you're one of my spiritual people that i i'm like engaging with uh, and when i was quizzing him about like oh like, where do you get your community where do you get your your feeding he was able to be like, oh, actually, no, I get my feeling from from this conversation with this person here, and you know, my church is my family and, and my friendship group here, and so like, I think we can get bogged down with only seeing church community. It can only be a church, but actually, like, I think like Christian community is so much more than just church. Uh, I think actually, yeah, yeah. Like, like, even from like a personal perspective, uh, the most profound relationships that I have with Christians and the places where I grow the most is not on a Sunday morning or a Sunday evening. It's like on a Wednesday evening when I'm around my friend's house having dinner. Yeah, I, I, I can appreciate uh, the, the, like the red flagness of not going to uh, like church on a Sunday. Um, but like I, we have to acknowledge, I think, our assumptions and our um, presumptions of like our experience and what the other person's experience might be um because they're, they're still getting getting community yeah. this might look some something like something different i think we just have to keep our eyes focused of on what is church i guess mm. and i think it's because all churches have their faults there is no perfect church but god's vision for the church is perfect because it's his vision for it but yeah. it is i've i've said before maybe a couple years ago now but like church is made up of made up of imperfect people making imperfect decisions however that doesn't make mm. god's vision for the church imperfect and actually church is yeah. a great thing and it is designed we're designed to be in community and church is meant to be that a community where there's people that are speaking into our lives and elders and ministers who dedicate their life to to being mm. our pastors and teaching the word and i think that church is an incredible thing yes it, it has its his bump its bumps along the road but we we mustn't lose sight on no god's vision is for the church do you, do you think there's a difference between how we view church today and what the biblical authors would have seen as the body of christ probably church looks very different now than it did then we're now on a, mm. a digital culture it's all everything looks different and the body of christ is kind of seen as us as all as one big body and some of us are ears some of us are mouths and some of us are hands mm. and but there is also yeah we are the body of christ and capital c church but also there is that vision for the individual communities and you see that mm. in all the the letters paul wrote in the new testament and all that stuff that there is that vision of the big body of christ and the big capital yeah. c church and also it's true. the other churches because paul would say in some of his letters and ask it to be read out to the yeah. congregations which mm. would indicate that they're meeting together and they're congregating together and reading scripture which is now scripture that's paul's letters but yeah. reading these letters to people which would kind of indicate to me that the church body and people gathering together as as a community is necessary mm. and like a body to me doesn't sound like three people specifically. It can be. Um, where two or more are gathered. Where two or more are gathered. It's true. It's very true. But I don't know. I just find, yeah, I, don't, I, I think in the early church even, I, I, I can't even imagine. This isn't rooted in scripture what I'm saying. I'm just <laughs> yeah, riffing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. In the day we, we live in, we can get spiritual feeding all over the internet. We can get everything from our, from our phones. Mm. Um, and so now more than ever, I can see why people would, be able to be churchless or buildingless mm. um but i i don't i can't imagine uh, being in the time where acts was going on and being able to be churchless because there yeah. were you can't you can't get feeding from your phone you have to get feeding from gathering in a yeah. building together and hearing it someone talk different. which does yeah, it sure. does feel different we've got that difference between lockdown and now yeah. as well, didn't we? but if that if the example that we're taking and the standard that we're following for church is the church in the acts 
then we should be gathering as people, mm -hmm. as thousands, and listening to someone talking yeah. about revelation. Yeah. So I think my take the way would be that every single one of us has a different relationship with God and God is speaking to us individually. That's pretty much it. What about you, Izzy? Strong. My take the way, um, I think I just feel quite encouraged, actually, of yeah. the idea of my relationship continuing to grow and to build and all of that yeah. stuff. My take the way is the same as yours, Michelle. I think... That's not allowed. Oh, it can be allowed. <laughs> That's what I'm taking away. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you know, my friends who might have different beliefs and ways of viewing life, they're actually on their own journey with God, yeah. and so am I, and it doesn't have to look the same. Yeah. Yeah. I think mine's the same. But no, sorry. three, three <laughs> isn't allowed. So sorry. Two's allowed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think um, another take the way um, would be that like, I can't just prioritise one thing. Like, I can't just prioritise prayer. I can't just prioritise community. Um, I think to get the best out of the best out of my relationship with God, I've got to, you know, be in community. I've got to be prayer. I've got to be reading the Bible. I've got to be worshipping as well. Um, we've, we've got to do all four. Mm. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. We've got a new episode coming next week, so do stay tuned. Subscribe, like, comment, all that shenanigans, and uh, see you soon. Great.